Every time Lily's mother-in-law Margaret prepared a meal, Lily mysteriously fell ill shortly after. At first it seemed like a mere coincidence, but as the years went by, her condition worsened. Then one fateful evening, Lily uncovered a truth that left her trembling with disbelief. As the pieces of the puzzle fell into place, Sarah realized the horrifying reason behind her chronic illness, and the decision to file for divorce became inevitable. Keep watching the video to find out the whole story, but before that, you can subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so that you can receive more of these interesting stories. Back to the story. Lily went over to her in-law's house when she knew they weren't home to look through their kitchen cupboards. She knew whatever was making her sick must be in their home as she only got sick by Margaret's meals, but she never expected to find this in their home. After an hour of searching, Lily had still found nothing that seemed out of place. She was ready to give up, but just as she was about to walk out the door, she noticed something. She was a bit hesitant at first, but she knew she wouldn't survive one more meal prepared by her mother-in-law. Lily couldn't believe her eyes when she found out what her mother-in-law had secretly been doing to her. This was far worse than she ever thought it would be. But when she told Eric about it, his reaction wasn't as she'd expected. But why was Lily getting sick? What will she find in her parents-in-law's house? And how will Eric react? Lily sat on the couch, dreading the evening that was about to come. It was Tuesday, which meant they were going to have dinner at her husband's parents' place, her in-laws. It also meant that she would be coming home with horrible stomach aches and would probably have to work from home tomorrow. It was a weekly thing eating at her in-laws' house, but each week she wanted nothing more than to cancel. You see, Lily always got sick after eating the food her mother-in-law prepared no matter what she cooked, and the strange thing was it only seemed to affect Lily. The first time she ate at her parents-in-law's house and got sick after, she thought it was just a stomach bug. When the same thing happened the second, third, and fourth time, she knew there was something else going on. She tried to talk to her husband about it, but he didn't understand. He believed it was all in her head. One time, he even accused her of faking it because he believed Lily never liked his mother in the first place, which was far from the truth. Well, partly. Lily indeed never really liked Eric's mother, but that was only because Eric's mother never really showed any interest in her. Lily still tried to like Eric's mother. She sometimes has to get manicures or to go shopping together on the weekends because she actually really wanted to have a bond with her. And no matter how desperately she wanted it, she never canceled their weekly dinner. But the weekly dinners were beginning to take their toll not only on Lily personally, but also on her relationship and work. Lily felt like things had to change or else her relationship wouldn't survive another month. She had to figure out why exactly she was getting sick each week. So she decided tonight was the night she'd figure out what exactly it was that made her sick. She planned on helping Eric's mother with the cooking. This way, she would hopefully be able to keep a close eye on whatever she put in her food, but there was only one thing she had to look out for. You ready to go? Eric suddenly asked. Lily looked up and realized she'd been daydreaming the whole time. Yes, let's go. Once they arrived at Eric's parents' house, Lily put on a fake smile and hugged her mother-in-law hello. Margaret, good to see you, she kindly said, but Margaret only reacted with a slight smile. After the somewhat awkward greeting, they all went inside and sat down at the dining table. Margaret immediately offered everyone something to drink and placed various snacks. Lily knew the snacks were always safe to eat as it was just a little bowl of nuts and a platter of store-bought cheese. Normally, Margaret would disappear into the kitchen and Lily would chat with Tom all night long. It was what she looked forward to the most about this night, but tonight had to be different. So as soon as Margaret disappeared into the kitchen, Lily excused herself. She walked over to the bathroom but changed course the moment she was out of sight. When she entered the kitchen, Margaret was surprised to see her. Lily, what are you doing here? If you need something, please let Tom know so he can come grab it, Margaret said with a smudge of attitude in her tone. Oh, sorry, Margaret, I don't need anything. I only wanted to see if you need any help. Margaret frowned. Uh, no, no, no help needed, thank you. Lily noticed she looked a bit nervous. Could it be because Lily wasn't supposed to be in the kitchen or could it all be in Lily's head? Either way, she wasn't about to let it go. Lily walked up to the counter and grabbed a knife. Don't be silly, Lily said with a smile. Let me help you, please. You must have something for me to do. She watched as Margaret thought long and hard about her answer. No, really, please go and sit with Eric and Tom. I've got everything covered here, she eventually answered. Lily knew her plan had failed. If she were to push this one more time, Margaret would get really mad, and that was the last thing she wanted. So she shrugged her shoulders and left the kitchen without saying a word. The rest of the evening went just as every other one, and Lily left for home with a terrible bellyache. That night, Lily decided she was done with being careful. She couldn't survive one more dinner at Eric's parents' house. There had to be a reason for her to feel like this, and she was determined to find out what it was. So as soon as she felt better, she went over to her in-law's house. She didn't go when they were home, of course. She knew they would never tell her the truth. No, she went when she was certain no one would be home. That was the only time when she'd be able to look through the kitchen for any clues. If Margaret was putting something in her food, it had to be in the kitchen. When she arrived at their house, she was relieved to see it was empty. As soon as she set foot inside, she went to the kitchen. There was no time to lose. 
She searched through Margaret's spice drawer, the fridge, inside every cabinet, but couldn't find anything. Slowly losing hope, Lily looked again, this time making sure she didn't miss a spot, but still there was nothing that seemed out of the ordinary. She decided to look through the rest of the house. Lily quickly searched the dining room. She looked in every closet, flipped through every cookbook, and even searched their bedroom but found nothing. Lily was ready to give up when she suddenly noticed something strange. Lily noticed a little handle dangling from the ceiling. It belonged to a pull-out staircase that would lead to the attic, and by the looks of it, Lily figured these stairs were used a lot. She got on her tiptoes and reached up for the handle when she suddenly heard a car pulling up the driveway. Her heart sank as she tried to figure out what to do. She didn't have enough time to get away through the back door, so without hesitation, quickly pulled the staircase down, climbed up, and pulled it up again. Lily was afraid to move as she feared the wooden floorboards would creak. There was a whole floor in between them as her parents-in-law were on the ground floor, and she was all the way up in the attic, but she figured if she could hear them, they could also hear her. Slowly but surely, Lily grabbed her phone out of her pocket. She turned on the flashlight and looked around her. Little dust particles were flying around everywhere, but there was also something about this attic that confused her. As Lily looked around her, she noticed the attic was strangely empty. Where normally everyone had their attic stocked with boxes and other things they wanted out of the way, this one was only filled with a single desk in the middle of the room, a chair behind it, and a single light bulb hanging from the ceiling. She decided to take off her shoes and walk over to the desk on her socks. This way, the floorboards would hopefully creak less, and surprisingly, her plan worked. She looked at the desk and saw a single notebook lying in the middle. Margaret's Special Family Recipes was written on it. Curious, Lily opened the book and began to read. Her eyes widened as she realized what her mother-in-law had been doing to her. It was never an accident, she thought. She was getting her sick on purpose. Lily had to get out of there and bring this book to her husband as soon as possible. She crouched down and very carefully opened the hatch a little. She opened it just enough to look down into the hallway and see if the coast was clear. When Lily felt confident the coast was clear, she slowly lowered the staircase more until it was ready for her to climb down. Her heart was racing in her chest as she carefully climbed down the stairs. When she reached the front door, she carefully opened it, scared to make even the slightest sound. Her parents-in-law were now just a few steps away from her. Lily ran away as fast as she could, clenching the book in her arms. She didn't even bother to close the door. She ran out of the street and around the corner where she parked her car. When Lily arrived home, she walked into the living room and saw her husband sitting at the kitchen table. Lily put the notebook down in front of her husband and saw his expression change. Lily observed her husband closely and was surprised by his reaction. He didn't seem confused. He seemed surprised, stunned even. It didn't seem like it was the first time he saw the book. Have you seen this book before? She asked. How did you get this? He answered, clearly trying to question. You know about this book, don't you? She asked him. She felt a lump form in her throat. Well, tell me everything. It's not what it seems, he stammered. You have to believe me. We were doing this for us. Lily couldn't believe her husband. For us? Making me sick week after week? Lily snatched the book off the table, forcefully opened it, and began to read aloud. Margaret's Family Recipe, How to Grow Your Family. One cup of turmeric, one teaspoon of ginger, two tablespoons of nettles. Grind together and consume once a week. She looked at her husband, who looked back at her dumbfounded. You really don't know I'm allergic to turmeric? She screamed out, throwing the book at him. Get out now! She pointed her finger at the door and stepped aside for him to get through. Eric knew he couldn't talk himself out of this situation anymore, so he got up and left. The worst thing about this whole situation was that Eric knew Lily didn't want to have children. She had made that very clear to him from the moment things got serious between them. Lily spent the night tossing and turning in her bed. She felt taken advantage of by her own partner whom she was supposed to trust with her life. The next morning she filed for divorce. There was no way she could ever be able to trust her husband or in-laws ever again. She was going to miss Tom the most out of all this. Their talks every Tuesday were truly something she looked forward to every week. She knew he had no idea about his son and wife's plan, so they made a promise to each other. Every Tuesday, they'd go out to eat together. Lily was able to pick up her life again, but not without the help of her therapist. She had to learn to trust again, and that wasn't easy. She stayed single for a few years, building herself up again and figuring out who she truly was. She moved towns, but not too far away so she could still meet with Tom. She never heard or saw from Eric and his mother ever again, but did eventually learn to forgive them. If only they'd discussed their plans with her. Wanting to increase fertility through herbs isn't wrong, it just had to happen with consent. Eric eventually remarried and had two children, and Lily was happy on her own. If you like this story and think it might have a positive meaning, you can share it with your family and friends. We would also love to hear your comments about this story. Thanks for watching, and have a great time.